back, everyone, to a brand new edition of Virtue's Rage right here on TheBigVetoBrand.com. And I am Virtue of No DQ, and that is Dr. Jargo. I guess we can also call the show Jargo's Rage sometimes. What's up, man? Oh, you know, just hanging out and being cool. Back to back to back podcasts for the two of us today. And you still got one more to go, man. But I, I got the biggest story in wrestling that nobody is talking about today. Got you all queued up for the review a little bit later on tonight. So do you want to lead off with that or do you want me to rage first? I mean, this is Virtue's Rage, but shall we make it Jargo's Rage? Totally up to you. I'm ready to go unless you want to go first. Go ahead. Knock yourself out, man. We'll keep the people in suspense. I am absolutely fucking just irate at some people online. Now, I'm not talking about wrestling trolls. I know how to deal with them on Twitter. That's my repertoire. That's my forte. But I'm talking about people that have fans, whatever, they can call themselves experts because they might know a few people in the business that write, that have done this since the Attitude Era, and they always, like, have to be the one that's right. It's like wrestling experts get upset if their opinion is overshadowed by someone else's opinion. Like, they can't accept maybe two people are right in different ways. So somebody called me, you know, I hated John Cena. Like, when they were starting that John Cena era, I – hated him. I was pissed. I was like, WWE, what are you doing? I was coming off the Attitude Era. I understand why Vince McMahon was doing it. They were publicly traded. PG. I knew he was selling to. I just, it took me a while to accept it. So I always, when he got that push, won those matches, I was like, like a mark, like crying, like some of these wrestling fans today. Then at some point, I want to say maybe around the summer of Punk 2011, when Lesnar threw him around a little bit, I was like, God damn it, John Cena is doing his job because he's in WWE. So he's doing what he needs to do for them. And I and I kind of grew into like liking that role that Vince McMahon, you know, the sports entertainment to the casual viewer. I grew to like that because it was like I grew by hating Cena first. Then I said, what the hell am I doing, Jargo? And then I started respecting it. And it leaked into when I knew Roman was going to be that next guy. I gravitated toward hit towards him for that very reason. And of course, by then, no, like punk, you know, he left the company, right? This is just as Roman was getting pushed. Brian had his little push, big push, but it was short because of the injuries. So Roman had no chance of getting over as a baby face, especially with scripts that bad saying lines like suffering, suck a tash that, you know, getting beat up the whole match to have five, there's three or four moves and go over So I was like, all right, what am I getting myself into? If I like this guy, you know, I don't really like how they're portraying him, but I saw potential in him, right? Remember, we talked about this before. Roman's working NXT. I saw a little bit. I'm like, wow, he's green, but the family, the Samoan family, they pretty much mostly get over. I mean, I I know main event scenes different than getting over in the mid card. But I was behind Roman from day one. And I always, dude, I went back and I shared dozens of tweets back to 2015. I'm like, take his handcuffs off, present him differently, let him cut a pipe bomb like CM Punk, turn him heel, put Heyman with him. All the shit that we have now, I fucking said it. And yet I was the Roman Mark who was in Chicago chanting, this is awesome for Roman and gender. Somebody believed that. Dude, I nudged Aaron Rift, and I said, Aaron, record me. I was in Chicago. I knew exactly what I was doing. Nobody was giving a shit for that match because they all wanted their little indie darling matches. So I stood up, and I knew people were going to hear me. And for Roman Reigns versus Jinder Mahal, I chanted, this is awesome, fight forever. And it went viral, okay? That's maybe how I ended up getting to 1,600 followers. So for me, that's a big deal. But all along, like, I kind of – I liked Roman because – I knew WWE was trying to make money off this guy, but I said he'd be better if this, if that. And of course, now that he's cool, I'm still in the same boat. I've never changed. Other people now are putting their opinions out there that Roman's doing a great job. Well, what the fuck now? You're going to look at me and tell me I never said that. I was just a mark that, that rooted for his failed baby face push. So I guess Jargo, what I'm raging about is the inconsistency of narratives online with wrestling opinions. I just wish people 
would give credit to someone else's opinion, even if it was long before theirs, and they just have a hard time doing that. So I had to get that off my chest. Any comments on me? I mean, do you think I'm too much of a fanboy, or do you think that I kind of maybe I was a fan of Roman, but I also knew what could work better for him? No, Dude, I, I called I, a lot of that shit. I called a lot of it. I had a tweet that said, put him with Eamon and the Usos from four years ago. I absolutely get it. <laughs> okay. um, I, I, I guess my thing with Roman Reigns. <sighs> and that's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. No, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way because I have so many thoughts, right? Um, the, the thing about Roman Reigns is he's just frustrating for fans. And I don't think that anybody is necessarily like at this point, we all knew five years ago, turn Roman heel, let him go. He's got to get it out of his system. The fans got to get it out of their system. Like we saw this with the rock. The Boom. rock didn't work yes. until you yes. turned him heel. Yep. And once the rock got it out of his system, the fans got it out of their system and he became the biggest baby face in the history of pro wrestling. Yep. The the thing about Roman Reigns to me is we just saw so much potential in the guy. If you just turn him heel, just turn him heel. He'll get over as a heel, but suffer and succotash ain't going to work. And yeah. I think that's the thing that really frustrated everybody about Roman Reigns. We all saw it. We see the potential. We know how good he could be. It was just the terrible booking and the John Cena like push. Yeah. He was not the right guy for that. You had to go back to the rock blueprint. Yep. And you know, did like when he was pushed as the baby face, the fact that he was being pushed, no matter what the fans did, I was openly like popped for that and told people, ha ha, he's your baby face and you got to deal with it. Okay. But no, it's because, you know, I love making fans mad or whatever. But the night after he beat the undertaker, when that arena, like, you know, they could say X Pac go away. He, what the fuck really is that? They were all standing there reacting to that guy. That night is when they should have turned Roman heel. But I mean, they waited and it's working out great, fine and dandy. But like he beat the Undertaker. Those fans didn't want him as a top baby face. He held him in the palm of their hand. I, dude, you could tell like that he looked comfortable that night. Dude, he went through a lot of shit after that, the leukemia relapse or whatever you know um and you know i hate people hated him so much they called phony on that like yep. dude come the fuck on but you know i mark out a little bit for roman the fact that when you know vince is pushing someone it gives me traction if i say i'm gonna like him and be behind him because i know every week they gotta see him and all i gotta say roman 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 he's the guy you know you know what i mean and that's fun for me i do like diving into other stuff too I'm trying to get in a dynamite, dude. This is my segue. You know me. I'm loving the Dan Lambert stuff, and they're going to the next level with that. I know he shouted last night, but, you know, it was popping me. But you said you have something from dynamite this week that you want to rage about. Indulge me. When you look at the history of professional wrestling, the most important thing that you see on a show is not seen it's heard you have to listen to the commentary you have to listen to what people are saying what they're putting over and what they're putting down if you really want to get into the show when i first got into podcasting virtue you know what i did wwe was the only game in town i would go to youtube i would find the full length episode of monday night raw and i would download it as an audio file and I would just listen to the show. I wouldn't actually watch it. And you, when you listen to the commentary, you know how good the show is or is not in what they're putting over or what they're not. Last, point. last night, CM Punk was on commentary. CM Punk turned heel last night and nobody is talking about it. Now, I told you I did some skimming, right? I saw segments because, you know, some personal stuff going on. Give me, I'm going to go watch it, but give me some examples. You remember how, why you say that? Because I'm interested now. What do I look for? MJF is in the ring and he's cutting a promo about how yeah. much he hates New Jersey and what a shithole New Jersey is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which I kind of took as a babyface turn for MJF, but that's <laughs> another conversation. 
what does CM Punk respond with? You know, after Brian Pillman comes out and MJF is yelling at his dead father in hell. I like what MJF is doing here. He's playing mind games. A little bit later, he's putting over FTR as the greatest tag team in the world. Every segment, he was putting over the heel. Good Every individual segment, he's putting over the heel. CM Punk turned heel last night. You got more character development in that hour out of CM Punk. At one point, he called the fans morons on commentary. The same fans where I get blocked on Twitter because I made fun of the crying fan that was loving his return. You know what? And he might have blocked me for this. I called him the carny. And when I say carny, I'm not, I don't mean the balloon popping host. You know what I mean? I mean the guys that know how to work the patrons. Absolutely. He, he's a master of his craft. And now I got to go back and listen to this because the whole like show on my DVR so I can hear what you just told me play through because that to me is intriguing. I think you got more character development out of CM Punk in an hour on commentary last night than you got throughout the rest of the entire show from any individual character, including Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega's face off. You now know where CM Punk's head lies inside of the AEW universe. Granted, he's still positioned as a baby face. He's pandering to these morons as he called them on commentary. I, I think this is absolutely brilliant. AEW, more than any pro wrestling company that I have watched in a very long time, and they take this straight from Gato and the New Japan huh. booking, they plant little seeds here and there. So in two months, in three months, when Punk comes around and he just starts tearing people down, all these little seeds were planted. You're getting into the psyche. We're seeing it with Christian, too. Last night, Christian cuts off Jungle Boy in a promo. Eventually, we're going to get a Christian versus Jungle Boy feud, and all these little things are all going to add up. CM Punk turned heel last night, and nobody is talking about it because Dude, nobody listens to the damn commentary. They do that stuff for a reason. He comes back as the super... I mean, dude, he's jumping into the fucking crowd with COVID. Vaccine or no vaccine, he's doing it every time, okay? He's making sure... Like, his whether he's doing that or he's out there as a heel, he's going to sell his merch because it's CM Punk and those fans are going to love him no matter what. Like, you know, they'll boo him if it's their job to boo him, like the MJF. So that's the thing. Right. How does it work? Like, if he does turn heel, and look at MJF, dude, he has to, like, dude, he's going to have to really turn. Like, for heels to be heels in wrestling, and we get a little bit of this with Dan Lambert, they have to break the snowflake bubble. They have to Absolutely. say things that are going to be controversial and make fans mad and say, I want him off my TV, or else fans respect great heel work. MJF's a great heel. But then is that really being a heel? Because you're supposed to want fans to want you to get beat when it's time for that big match and the baby face gets extra over that way could aew i know they're on tnt i know they got sponsors could we get some of this shades of gray area and and i get it right I, like i just tweeted this earlier i miss growing up and watching sitcoms and comedians in the 80s and 90s um on demand not on demand rerun stuff from the 70s because i was born in 80 and i had black friends I had what turned out to end up being gay friends. And back then, nobody was insulted. We all laughed. Like, you know what I mean? No, and today, what the fuck? How do you be a heel today? Well, if you're CM Punk, I think it's actually much easier than you give it credit for. All CM Punk has to do is become the hypocrite that he claimed that everybody else was. I want to see CM Punk come into the ring in a suit. I want to see CM Punk as the corporate champion. I want to see CM Punk in every media opportunity. I want to see CM Punk only coming back for big paydays. I only want to see CM Punk working part-time. I want to see everything that CM Punk ragged on, everything that CM Punk hated about the WWE. That's what I want CM Punk to become. I want CM Punk to become Randy Orton. That's what I want out of CM Punk with the new generation. 
because he oh. can't he can't keep up with them in the ring. Slow it down. Work a WWE style. Dress all the dress to the nines because all you morons bought all those T-shirts and made me two and a half million dollars in my first three days working here. Dude. You fucking mark material, baby. Dude, it's his job. Dude, you got baby faces there. You don't need, you got the punk initial pop. And like I said, heel, he's still going to sell stuff. Use yep. him to be what you just described. And now you get your young baby faces over against him. Because Dude, nobody, like, nobody likes Tony Happy Khan Go pull the Lucky trigger. CM Punk. Like, Happy Go Lucky, yay, I'm just happy to be here, CM Punk. That's not what made CM Punk You see cool. me make fun of it? You see me do the, the mean evil doink tweet? And then I yes. put the... And I call him a clown, but like I, I immediately am like, this is what I remember like your last days in WWE. Well, the problem, and then this is, is how you are now. Woo! Where's the everything? Babies? Everything CM Punk hated about the WWE is what AEW represents. The AEW idea, the concept, everything about it is founded off of the pipe bomb promo, right? Like you can just play back the pipe bomb promo and then look at the AEW mission statement. And that's what you have. So if you're CM Punk, how are you anything other than happy to be here? Because this is exactly the company that I wanted. Wait a minute. All you entitled millennial brats suck. Screw this. You know what? WWE was right. Vince had it right the whole time. Like, screw all this flippy, divey crap. Like, I want him to become Randy Orton. Are they using Dan Lambert to test the waters for that? He, because he's, you can, like, Dan Lambert can go away down the road and he's not yeah. a permanent fixture of wrestling. He can go back to doing his MMA stuff. Are they testing that water? Maybe. It's possible. To, oh, God, that would be interesting. Yeah, all right. Turn him into Jim Cornette. Yeah. I mean, basically, sure. just turn CM Punk into a cross between Vince McMahon and Jim Cornette. That's the only way you're going to get over as a heel in 2021. MJF is living proof. I couldn't believe MJF's promo last night. Did you watch that yet? I, I heard some clips that were, you know, again, I don't mind going past that line of, like, explain to me what what your take is on his promo well, because I, mean, I heard he said some controversial things well number one he goes for the cheap heat ripping on new jersey right which well, is, is fine is, is but that. it's the mjf shtick right yeah, yeah. but then he gets into the substance of the promo you're trying to get me interested in an mjf versus brian pillman jr feud right like do I really care? MJF wins this feud in the end right like I mean just look at the pecking order inside of aew so MJF wants to have a word with Brian Pillman Sr. Yep. About Dude, what one of my all-time favorites. Basically about what a loser his kid is, which is fine. Totally down with that. So MJF goes to the middle of the ring and he and he looks up to the heavens and he says, Mr. Pillman, oh, who am I kidding? And he looks down and yes. starts kicking at the dirt. And he, hey, Pillman. And it's just like, yeah, we know, we know Brian Pillman's not in heaven. Brian Pillman's clearly in hell. And that place booed MJF out of the building. He's getting legitimate heat, but he's got to go to such an extreme to get there. The Young yeah. Bucks right now, right? The Young Bucks are getting booed, but they are so obnoxious. They have to go like to the nth degree to get over his heels with their obnoxiousness. Like how does Nick Jackson's facial hair not have its own Twitter account at this point? Right. Dude. It's cause the fan, like the fans know too much and they they're, this is great heel work. And you literally have to do inappropriate for modern day insults and just go to that level but to get the heat. It? I mean, how do you I mean, get heat without doing that today? How? There's this huge misconception, and I blame it on Vincent Kennedy McMahon, that pro wrestling is for children, but it's not. And AEW is embracing that. They had a shut the fuck up chant on TNT yep. for shit, about a shit, minute shit, and a shit, half. Shit, 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 I remember it, but hearing all yeah. this shit. Yeah, 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 right? Jericho's writing songs about shit faces in the middle of the ring. This is not, it, I, somebody called into Wade Keller's show last night. And he made a comment about how there's no way that he let his kids watch AEW. Good. Did you let your kids watch ECW? Because yeah. that's very much the same kind of crowd we're going for. This is not geared towards children. Yeah. This is not geared towards eight-year-olds. There's a whole other demographic out there that's just dying to be reached. 
eighteen and, to forty nine. <laughs> and that's who AEW is catering to. Yeah, dude, we could talk about this forever. You know, I got to do the review later. I have a question for you. Fill me. I I know what happened, but like, why am I? Why am I seeing this phrase online? When who started this? The Suzuki incident. You, <laughs> I, I want, like, I know what happened, but can you, because you're, I know you're on it. You'll be able to, like, enlighten me with this. Smart me up to what's going on here. So basically what happened is last week on Dynamite, they had the John Moxley versus Minoru Suzuki match. In Cincinnati, correct? In Cincinnati, Ohio, John Moxley's hometown. And Suzuki comes out and there's like seven minutes left in the show. The show is running incredibly long. So they cut off Suzuki's entrance and hit Moxley's entrance. Moxley comes out, wins the match in like seven minutes. Everybody's very disappointed. It was probably supposed to go more like 15, but the show was running long. Total failure on Tony Khan's part, right? I think we briefly covered that, I think. So now it has become the Suzuki incident. And so now we're getting all these tweets of different people that are basically giving the the credit for the Suzuki incident to other professional wrestlers. Like what would Bret Hart's conversation on the Suzuki incident? What about Vince McMahon? If he was going to comment on the Suzuki incident, we even got a Hulk Hogan one on the Suzuki incident where he actually took credit for writing the song and he was going to use it for himself on the, and the, the Japanese tours, but he gave it to brother Mis- Minoru. Yeah. So now Suzuki's pissed about this. Because Minoru Suzuki is a no bullshit kind of guy. Exactly. I'm like, to me, it's like, I, I'm sure he wants to entertain fans, but at the same time, does he want to have this viral weird shit be the reason? Right. So he's using it as fire instead. And now this is all John Moxley's fault. It was all because it was booked in Cincinnati. It was the hometown treatment. That's why Moxley won the match. And so at Wrestle Grand Slam, we're going to get a Suzuki goon reunion of Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki versus John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. It should have been Sammy Callahan, but it's going to be Eddie Kingston. And they're going to give Suzuki his full entrance in New York. And they're all going to sing Kazani Nare. And it's going to be awesome because it's Minoru Suzuki. And Suzuki will smile about it. And then he's going to laugh at John Moxley when John Moxley punches him in the face. Have you heard Minoru Suzuki laugh? It's the most terrifying thing on the face of the planet. Dude, like, I, I wanted, did he laugh in that Asuka kind of beat up a couple times? I, that's I like, think I, I think so. That's where I'm. That's where I remember hearing it. It's a signature well, Suzuki spot where somebody is like just wailing away on him, and Suzuki just stops and he goes ha 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 ha, and then he just starts beating the shit out of you, like because it's Minoru Suzuki and he's one of the most scary men on the face of the planet, and that's a shoot. Is he gonna go over Moxley? And there he are, is, there, is that what's that a tag match? Is that gonna be a tag match for New York? Yeah, that one. Well. He probably, I would put Suzuki over Kingston, protect Moxley. Okay, gotcha. Dude, that's it. We raged, man. Oh, fun times. Anything else you want to add before we close it? Uh, the only thing I got to add, keep up with me on social media, at Not Jargo, at Destino Pod. G1 Climax starts on Saturday, which means you're probably going to be getting a new episode of Destino about every other day for the next month or so. Cool. And, you know, you can follow me on Twitter at no DQ underscore virtue. Heck, Jargo and I not just do Virtues Rage every week. We do Men of Business. Now we're doing a roundtable with Vito and Brad Shepard. You know, I guess that'll be every week. We'll see how that goes. And you're going to come back on the review again probably next week, which will be your third time. So, dude, we have a good time doing that review because we got nice little no DQ galaxy and they're very generous. So it's always fun to do that. So, for Dr. Jargo, I am Virtue. This has been Virtue's Rage. And just stay tuned to our Twitter, especially mine. You'll see everything we do there because I'll retweet it and talk about it at some point. So, thank you for listening or watching, and we will see you next time.